Hi, my name is Anna. I want to ask, what happens to non-Muslims who are, have never been exposed to Islam? And what if a non-Muslim says that the miracles of Jesus are bigger than the ones that Muhammad performed? Sisters ask two questions basically. What are non-Muslim who says, who has never been exposed to Islam, what happens to them? And secondly, if a non-Muslim comes and says that the miracles of Isa al are greater, what happens to them? Point number one, if a non-Muslim comes and tells me that they have not been exposed to Islam, today, in this world of science and technology, it's difficult. Maybe if you ask this question 50 years back, it was possible. Today, in this age of science and technology, especially the media bombarding misconception about Islam, you're exposed to Islam, maybe the wrong Islam, maybe pseudo-Islam, that Muslims are terrorists, Muslims are fundamentalists, Islam is a religion of killing. It degrades the woman, it subjugates the woman. They may be exposed to Islam, but wrong Islam. Now what happens to a non-Muslim who's not exposed to the right teachings of Islam? I feel if a non-Muslim hears something in the media, or any human being hears something in the media, he should not take it for granted. The Quran says in Surah Ujura, chapter 49, verse number 6, whenever you get information, check it up before you pass it on to the third person. Whenever you get information, it is important that the person checks up whether the information is right or wrong. As far as the message of Islam is concerned, what if a non-Muslim may be living in an island, may be living in Timbuktu, or living somewhere where he doesn't have any knowledge of Islam? First, it's the duty of every Muslim to convey the message to non-Muslim, irrespective of whether we convey or not. Allah says in the Quran in Surah Fusilat, chapter number 41, verse number 53, Allah says, Sanurihim ayatina fil afakhi wa fi anfusihim hatta yatabayina lam annahla that soon we shall show them our signs in the furthest regions of the horizons until it is clear to them that this is the truth. Allah says that He will show the signs to every human being before the human being dies. He will show His signs in the furthest regions of the horizons until it is clear to them that this is the truth. So Allah takes it up upon Himself that He will convey this message to each and every human being, whether he's born in a Muslim family or non-Muslim family, whether he's born in a Muslim land or non-Muslim land, Allah will give this message to every human being. That's the reason there were some surveys done in 1950 in two tribes. Now these two tribes, the Kapauku tribe and the Austrian Aborigines, these two tribes did not come in contact with modern civilization till as late as 1950. When the researchers went, and tried to find out what was their way of life. These people, they believed that God was one. They believed he alone should be worshipped. They believed he did not beget anyone. They did the sajda, they did prostration for worshipping that God. It was everything of Islam but in name. So when no external influence comes on a human being, that person submits his will to God. That's the reason our beloved Prophet Muhammad said, every child is born in Deen al-Fitr. Every child is born in the innate religion. He is born as a Muslim. Our beloved Prophet Muhammad said, every child is born as a Muslim. Muslim means a person who submits his will to God. Later on, that person may be influenced by his parents, by his teachers, by his elders. He may start doing fire worship. He may start doing idol worship. And then he may deviate on the wrong track. That's the reason when a non-Muslim accepts Islam, the more appropriate word is revert. He was a Muslim, born as a Muslim, he gets converted to a wrong religion, comes back to the original faith, that is Islam. So the right word is revert. So coming to your question, every child, if any child, if you take three children, one born to a Christian, one born to a Jew, one born to a Hindu, isolate these three children completely from any external influence. And when they grow up and you try and find out what is their way of life, it will be nothing but Islam. Only after external influence, they start deviating and worshipping wrong things and having wrong ideas. This is scientifically proven. Furthermore, sister, where your second question is concerned, that what if someone doesn't know Islam and thinks that Jesus Christ did miracles? I do agree Jesus Christ did miracles. But sister, miracle is not the test. If you believe in Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, if you read in the Bible, Jesus Christ, peace be upon himself, says 
in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 24, verse number 24, it says that, For there shall arise many false Christ and false prophets, and will do wonders and miracles, and if it were possible, shall deceive the very elect. So Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, says, Miracle is not the test. They shall arise many false Christ and false prophets, and shall do wonders and miracles, and if it were possible, shall deceive the elect. That means Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, says, Miracle is not the test. Miracle does not make a person a god. Miracle does not make a person superior. Because all the miracles that were done by all the prophets were done by Almighty God Himself. All the miracles. All the miracles done by Moses. The parting of the sea. When He threw the stick, it became into a snake. It was done by Almighty God. All the miracles that Isa alayhi salam, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, did were done by Almighty God. Same with Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, splitting of the moon were done by Almighty God. I will tell you that Islam is the only non-Christian faith which makes an article of faith to believe in Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. No Muslim is a Muslim if he does not believe in Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. We believe that he was one of the mightiest messengers of Almighty God. We believe that he was the Messiah, translated Christ. We believe that he was born miraculously without any male intervention, which many modern day Christians today do not believe. We believe that he gave life to the dead with God's permission. We believe that he healed those born blind and lepers with God's permission. The Christians and the Muslims, we are going together. But one may ask, then where is the parting of ways? The parting of ways is that most of the Christians, they believe that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was Almighty God. They believe that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, claimed divinity. In fact, if you read the Bible, there is not a single unequivocal statement in the complete Bible where Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, himself says that I am God, always is worship me. If sister, you can point out any unequivocal statement, any unambiguous statement from any version of the Bible in which Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, himself says that I am God, always is worship me, I am ready to accept Christianity today. In fact, in fact, if you read the Bible, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said, it's mentioned in the Gospel of John, chapter number 14, verse number 28. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said, my father is greater than I. Gospel of John, chapter number 10, verse number 29, my father is greater than all. Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 12, verse number 28, I cast out devil with the Spirit of God. Gospel of Luke, chapter number 11, verse number 20, I with the finger of God cast out devil. Gospel of John, chapter number 5, verse number 30, I can of my own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just. For I seek not my will, but the will of Almighty God. Anyone who says, I seek not my will, but the will of Almighty God, he's a Muslim. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, is a Muslim. He never claimed divinity. He never said that he was Almighty God. He clearly mentioned, it's mentioned in the Gospel of John, chapter number 14, verse number 24. He said that the words that you hear are not mine, but my Father's who has sent me. It's mentioned in the Gospel of John, chapter number 17, verse number 3. This is life eternal, so that you may know there is one God and Jesus Christ who thou has sent. It clearly mentioned that Jesus Christ was a messenger. It's mentioned in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 19, verse number 16 to 18, that a person approaches Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, and asks him, that good master, what good things should I do so that I shall enter eternal life? So Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, says, why thou callest me good? Leave aside God, G-O-D. Why thou callest me good, G-O-D? For there is only one good, and that is the Father in heaven. And if thou want to enter eternal life, you keep the commandments. Jesus Christ didn't say that if you want to enter eternal life, if you want to go to paradise, believe I'm God. He didn't say that you believe that I died on the cross for your sins. What he said, if you want to enter eternal life, if you want to enter paradise, you keep the commandments. And it's clearly mentioned in the book of Acts, chapter number 2, verse number 22, that ye men of Israel, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God amongst you by wonders and miracles which God did by him, and you are witness to it. What does it say? Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God amongst you by wonders and miracles and signs which God did by him and you witnessed it. Regarding a question of miracles, what does the Bible say? Book of Acts, chapter number 2, verse number 22. A man approved of God amongst you by wonders and miracles and signs which God did by him and you witnessed it. So all the credit goes to Almighty God. And Jesus Christ was a man. All the miracles were done were done through Almighty God. 
So all the miracles, all the messengers did were done by Almighty God. They came to testify there was one God. But Jesus Christ also said in the Gospel of John, chapter number 16, verse number 12 to 14, that I have many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. For he, when the spirit of truth shall come, he shall guide you unto all truth. He shall not speak of himself. All that here shall he speak. He shall glorify me. Now this prophecy is prophesying no one but the last and final messenger prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So if you're a true Christian, and if you believe in Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said, I have many things to say unto you, but he cannot bear them now. For he, when the spirit of truth shall come, he shall guide you unto all truth. He shall not speak of himself. All that he hears shall he speak. He shall glorify me. This prophecy is prophesying no one but the last and final messenger prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So if you're a true Christian, you should believe in the last and final messenger prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Hope that answers the question, sister. Do we have any more questions in the lady section? Assalamu alaikum. I just want to tell Dr. Zakir, I'm actually, I am a revert and I was just asking questions on behalf of my non-Muslim family and friends and I just wanted to say, you know, subhanAllah and la ilaha illallah. Welcome, welcome to the religion of peace, sister. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you and grant you Jannah. And we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that... And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide you. And if you have any questions, sister, regarding to help your other family members come back to the right faith, to revert, you're most welcome to ask any questions, sister. And you have any clarification, you're most welcome. There are many dawah centers here in Dubai. There are many sisters' organizations. You can contact them, inshallah, if you have any queries. And now, if you have any questions regarding to convince your other family members, you're most welcome to our sister.